So the title for my talk, is it okay? The is regulation and coordination of intracellular trafficking pathways. So halfway through my organizing this uh, conference, the mathematicians who talked with me said that they, they added, we added um, the phrase, where is the red? Ideas and concepts. So I decided to stick to it and just talk about ideas and concepts mostly and give some e examples of uh, data and also to put it in the context as the organizer of the rest of the conference. Okay, So I'll start, my talk will include introduction, regulation of secretion and regulation of recycling. So what's really good, um, so in the introduction I just want to bring you to what, is, what does it mean regulation of uh, intracellular trafficking. Um, what's really good is that I don't need to give a really long introduction because you've heard everything that I'm going to say in the introduction. You probably he heard throughout these days. So the secretory pathway or the exocytic pathway takes proteins and membranes from the endoplasmic reticulum to, through the Golgi apparatus through secretory vesicles to the plasma membrane. Uh, in the endocytic pathway, stuff is taken either from the outside or from the membrane through a set of endosomes to the lysosome, which is the degradative compartment of the cell. It's all going to be full in a minute. So this was talked in, in length in, on Tuesday. You also probably know that traffic in every step is bidirectional and there is crosstalk also between the endocytic and exocytic pathway. And everything um, between compartments is um, transported via vesicles between the ER and the Golgi, between the Golgi and the plasma membrane, plasma membrane to endosomes, endosomes to lysosome. So the, we, you also heard that inside compartments, Golgi, the sorting compartments, Golgi and endosomes, Transport is, um, is done actually by maturation. And I'll talk about this too later. That's why I wanted to. So what is vesicular transport? A donor compartment, let's say ER, you take takes the cargo, which can be either luminal, luminal is the inside of the, of the compartment, or uh, membranous. And then this vesicle will form, and then it needs to fused with the, accept the right acceptor compartment. So now this is vesicular transport, uh, just the overview. But if you look really at the substeps, it's much more complicated. And you heard about this too. So the vesicle first has to form. And there will be coats and cargo receptors. And then uh, it will have to move. And we, we heard about motors, either for actin or tubulin, the, the cytoskeleton. And then there will sometimes be membrane remodeling. And then you heard about tethers that will bring the vesicles close to the acceptor compartment. And then you will get the snare complex, um, complexes that will help the fusion of this vesicle with the acceptor compartment. Okay. So if you want to think about it simply uh, about regulation, so if this is the cell, and this is our vesicle, this is Paris, no? and the vesicle, the question is who are the traffic lights of the cell, okay? So at least some of the uh, major traffic lights are these GTPases, uh, which are called YPT in yeast and Rub in mammalian cells, so you heard about Rub6, and these are really what they do, they are molecular switches. They are very small, but they can cycle by themselves from the GDP bound form to the GTP bound form. From here to he from GDP to GTP, they exchange the nucleotide. And from GTP to GDP, they hydrolyze the GTP. We, and I'll explain it later, when they're in the GDP bound form, they are mostly off. In the GTP bound form, they are on. So in yeast, there are um, 9 to 11 of them, 
the, the other two, we don't know yet much about them, so I'm I just, I'm not sure. Located in, in membranes? I'll explain in a second. So, um, and here are the major ones. So even when we say nine, we have, for example, YPT1 in the beginning here, and YPT3132, which are sometimes called 3132, they, can, they are functional homologues, okay? And for example, we don't know much, we know about YPT5, one and two, three, uh, we, but we know mostly about 51, but they are involved in the same process. So it's, it, even when we say nine, it's actually less, and it's important for later. Okay. Does each one have a clear homologue in mammalian cells? Or? Um, yes, and this is shown here. So, thank you. So there are 70, about 70 mammalian human rubs. They are also regulating the human um, secret, um, protein trafficking pathways. So there are more, but here I'm showing for, oops. So I, I just wanted to point that there are a really large group of FGTPases. Together with their friends, with their upstream regulators and some of the downstream effectors, they form like a 200 protein group, which is about 1% of the human proteome. Yes. So for example, RAP6Q, you put it between the ER and the Golgi. Yeah, RAP6 is not very clear what it does, and Bruno just told you. It's like somewhere here floating. Rub one, and I'll like talk about the localization and function. He's going to get a heart attack, can you say? No, 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 Bruno, no heart attacks here. So YPT1, the best homologue is, is the close homologue is Rub1. Uh, YPT3132 is, is mostly Rub11. Rub6, actually the Rub6 uh, homologue, um, YPT6, is also a functional homologue. YPT1 is also a functional home. RAB1 is a functional homologue. You can delete YPT1, put RAB1, very highly conservative. Conserved, can you see? Um, and the same is true about YPT6 and RAB6. I don't know why. Be, we, we haven't figured it out. It's not essential in yeast for viability. Um, so, and, and we actually focused, Bruno works about that, on them. We focused only, mostly here. That's why the Golgi is so big. So I just want to give you, an, uh, in the introduction, some idea about how we even got into where we are now. So I'll call them ra um, the phases one, two, three. So it all started in yeast. All, all this family was discovered in yeast. First, why yeast? Because in yeast, we can do, we, it's the same compartments. We do cell biology same way. We can do biochemistry. But the genetics. Um, is what uh, separates it, and that's why we can do so much more faster, okay? Of, of course, in combination with molecular genetics. So in phase one, we first shown, we, uh, we looked at two YPTs, really. YPT1, which is essential for viability, YPT 3.1 and 3.2, which together are essential. The cell can have one or the other. So they are very similar in their functional homologues as of today. You know, maybe each one, they have some minor uh, other f uh, functions that we don't know yet, but for now, we usually delete one and then the other one becomes um, a essential. So this we did, how did we discover them, somebody asked me, is by reverse genetics, meaning that we so, oh, this is an interesting protein. It has homology to us. It must be an oncogene, and it is. Um, and, but this take, took a, a many years to see it. And then we went from the gene to mutant. We made mutations to phenotypes to see what's happening here. So the next thing was, or, or together, was to see in which, which transported. So, so first we knew that they, it was a huge thing to see that, they, no, they are not at the plasma membrane. No, they are not in signal transduction per se, so, but they are in trafficking. And then we wanted to know which trans transport step they, because by now we know that there, are, there is more than one, which transport step they regulate. And here again, combination of molecular genetics, genetics and cell biology. And the last thing in phase one, we already knew that it's conserved from a, a yeast to humans, you know, the RAB1 and YPT1 by also a combination of molecular genetics and cell biology. So 
this is um, the minimalistic view of cells, exocytic pathway to plasma membrane, endocytic pathway, okay? And what, we sh well, what I'm showing here, based on function, of bas based on mutant phenotypes, we saw that they are in the exocytic pathway. YPT1, a set of papers, we showed that it's in the early transport from ER to Golgi or Golgi2, and then the YPT31 and 32 are late Golgi. Exactly what they regulate? So they, what exactly? If you stop them, actually it's very fast. So I'm saying they're essential. How do we work with them? It's a good question. We have a temperature sensitive conditional mutants. We can use different conditional mutants. The easiest one to, to so understand. When they mutate, exactly. Stop of trafficking transport between, we can measure ER to Golgi transport. Exactly, say, we way to transport, but just transport, not to transport. Right, yeah, but yes we can no. see it's transport or not transport, but also we can see which step by using cell biology, combination with cell biology. No, steps one of the two. When I say step, it's one of the two. Yeah, YPT1 is here. We block it, block from ER to Golgi. If we stop YPT3132, block from Golgi to plasma membrane. But, why, but so, in principle, why you should stop it sometimes? You always have a strategy. What do you mean to stop it when it is no mutant? It's never stopped. I'll, I'll explain, okay, why, okay, in a minute. So, because we saw it, we, and we, we saw that YPT1 is an entry, entree, so this is my French, or sortie from the Golgi, we call them the Golgi gatekeepers, okay? Okay, in phase two, and I'm getting to your question, don't worry. Uh, we wanted, so we knew that they, they are molecular switches. We knew that somehow they uh, regulate vesicular trafficking, but we didn't know what's in between, okay? So the first question was, how are they regulated? What's the upstream regulation of the rubs? Who turns them on and off? So these are the people who turn off the switches like Georgiana here, we turn on the switch. Um, and, um, and who are they? So they are called GIFs for, or GIFs for, so exchange of nucleotide guanine, nucleotide exchange factors to turn them on, and GAPs for a GTPase activating factor to turn them off. Okay. So just to put it in perspective, I put here uh, this is one of the one of the GIFs in cells, and by the way, they are very different between proteins. But it's it's for just YPT1, you need a core trap, which is a complex of <coughs> four different proteins, two, uh, five subunits, but two are identical. And this is the little YPT1 under them. That's the the size. It's very small. It can interact with the GIF. It, it, it can interact with the factors, but not much more. That's why. Uh, I want to argue that they are really regulators, as opposed to doing something else in, in addition. So this is to remind you about Monday, about comp protein complexes, and we, uh, of course they um, play a big function, a big role in what YPT rubs do. So uh, in addition to this upstream regulation by Jeffs, they, as Bruno also suggested, these YPTs, the way that they are attached to membranes, they are th is by having a lipid tail, okay? So they have a lipid tail. So in the cytoplasm, and they cycle between the cytoplasm and the membrane, okay? So in to be in the cytoplasm, because it's a lipid tail, they have to be buried in a friend's, uh, so there is a place where the, this lipid tail is inserted, and this is why they can be in the cytoplasm. It's called GDI. And then when they get on the membrane, they insert their um, lipid tail here, and then they can be seen by the GIF. So there are actually two, mm -hmm. for now, we are thinking of <coughs> as two upstream inputs to activate a rub. One is to do the membrane attachment, and the second is to turn them on with the GIF, with the activator, okay? And once they are in their GTP bound form on the membrane, this is when they are on. Okay? What does it mean to be on? Oh, and the way that we think about it right now is uh, that the gap which turns the G from GTP to GDP 
is just required to, for them to be able to recycle back to the cytoplasm, which is also important, so they can function again. So we know about a little bit about, the, we knew about the upstream regulators, regulation of YPT1 and YPT3, 1 and 3, 1 and 3, 2. But now what does it, what happens downstream? So what happened downstream is, oh, that when they're on, they interact with these proteins. Why doesn't push? So I lost the, oh here, sorry. So uh, they interact with these effectors. This means that they are on. Okay, so who are these effectors? These are the people who really do the work. Unlike those um, activators which only turn them on and off, okay? So these are the people who really do the work. Who are they? They are all people who alre you already know. So I showed you this slide before, but now I just want to say, for every step you'll see a YPT rub, and this is summary of m work in many labs. YPT rub in, in every step, and its effector will be in, in red, okay? So remember, oh, and the other thing that I want to say, a single rub can interact with multiple effectors, okay? So uh, the first step in the formation, remember, here is the, the YPT rub, and it's one of its effectors which interacts with the cargo receptor. Here in vesicle motility, um, the, we have a motor that can be um, either, and, and Bruno already talked about myosin or kinesin, depending on which cytoskeletal uh, route they want to go on. They can be membrane remodeling, and here are Again, a rub and its effector um, in vesicle docking. They, these are what the rubs are really famous for, and many people think of them just as settering factors, but this is just one of their kind of effectors. And then finally, some here, here the YPT and um, rub and its effector regulating also snare comp complex formation, so they also regulate vesicle fusion. So basically, all the machinery components that are required for uh, moving a vesicle from one place to another are recruited by these rubs. Does this answer your question? No, my question is why you need to regulate it all? Why you just have some protein to transport them? Well, so why do you stop it nom normally? Why okay, so let's continue to talk. Yeah. Okay, it's but conversation. You know why to do it? Not how I'll, I'll, I'll to explain, do it. I'll, it's coming, okay? So here we are with our Paris and the vesicle and our uh, traffic lights. And you would want, and this is partly the answer, that these traffic lights will, will talk with each other or uh, will do some things to, so that to make the traffic go more smoothly. Okay? So do IPT wa uh, rubs coordinate trafficking and, and at what levels? So now we are back to East again because there are only very few of them. We can cover the whole exocytic pathway with three rubs, while in mammalian cells you'll have to deal with 35. And if you think about all their interactors, the, the, inter the nets, the interaction nets are much smaller. So I think that this is again going back to East to try and understand this. So when I talk about regulation or coordination by YPT rubs, I'm going to talk about, first of all, coordination uh, of vi multiple vesicular transport substeps. I told you that there are many substeps. So if you just give the cell only the coat, but you don't the vesicle, but you don't make sure that it also has the motor and the tethering factor, this, the traffic stops immediately, okay? So we have mutants that we can stop traffic. We cannot even measure it, less than one minute. It's done, stop, okay? The second one, which is a little higher um, regulu regulation, is to integrate, I, I, there should be, there is a need to integrate different transport steps in the same pathway so that there will be one whole pathway smoothly going through uh, Paris. And then also we found that they coordinate between different cellular um, processes and pathways, okay? So I'll try to give an example for each one of these. So we start with um, regulation in the secretory pathway, exocytic pathway, 
And I'll give you these two, uh, two examples. One, coordination of sub-steps, and, uh, and I'll start with it, and then integration of whole pathways. So here is this example. So here is again a vesicle forming from the donor compartment with all its friends. And if we look at formation, motility, docking, and fusion, and if we look at Golgi and plasma membrane, we knew all the machinery components. We knew that YPT 3132 is involved in the beginning. We knew that myosin works in motility, myosin 5 in this case. We knew that the tethering factor is called an exocyst. Uh, this is from work by uh, Peter Novik's lab. And actually, we, we, also, we knew also that it's, there is a Jeff and um, the, the another. Uh, this is another example of two IPTs that are needed for one transport step. The same way that you asked Bruno before, uh, RAP6 and maybe RAP8, this is YPT3132 and SEC4. This is uh, important for just the beginning to bring SEC4 and then SEC4 takes it from there. And we also knew uh, the snares. Here's an example. SEC9 uh, is a T snare that is involved at the end. But we didn't know if there is any coordination between the sub-steps. Okay? So What, so I'm going to show. I'm, I'm going to tell you that YPT three one and three two are, requi are required for vesicle formation. We showed this, and then this is by using mutants, uh, electron microscopy. So then we, we see which step is they, they stop at what because mutants uh, accumulate material from the step before the step in which they are blocked. Okay, and then we showed. By different, so whenever I, I say something, we showed it usually by interaction, a exhaustive interaction first, you know, direct interaction, and then to show, yeah, they interact in the cells, okay, and then uh, to see what is the role of the interaction. So in this case, I'm just gonna tell you once one little story. We we showed that they interact. YPT 3132 interacts with the myosin. And we, we made an interaction, because I think that this is crucial, uh, interaction-specific myomutant. Myomutant that can, because myosin-5 can do many things, but we made a, a mutant that just specifically cannot interact with YPT3, 1, and 3, 2. It can interact and do jobs everywhere else. Okay, and then... It's a mutation of a particular mutation of the gene, yeah? Yes, in the gene, but then it's, it's, it's also in the protein. It's produced by different... Yes, yeah. yes. So now we did the genetics, we replaced the myosin, uh, we put it in cells, and now we follow what happens by live cell microscopy. And um, here what we do, we look at, at actin to just see, so this is budding yeast, just to remind you, meaning that all the secretion is polarized, it's going through the bud. Actin is polarized to the bud. The vesicles we view here, it's just a marker for us, sec4 in green, and when you see them, Together, you, you get the yellow. So in wild type cells, you see them together, meaning the, uh, this is a polarized tra transport from the mother cell to very efficiently to the bud. Now here is our, what I call a yid uh, mutant, which is YPT interaction defective, myo2 mutant. It's only defective in this, it's there. And then you can see that all the vesicles are here, and we showed it by other, also by electron microscopy. But then, and the actin is in the right place, but the vesicles don't go to the bud. So there is no polarized secretion in this mutant. So what it means is that we, we already knew that YPT31 and 32 are important for vesicle formation for, because of interacting with other effectors, but now we show that it's also required, not just the formation, but to put on the right myosin to take them to the right place. <coughs> okay? And how do you build a bud without porous secretion? So the beginning of the bud, probably, it just can be random. No? You don't? Okay, we can talk. Mutant does not make any bud. Well, this is a myo2 mutant that does make a bad. No, 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 but uh, if, so you, if you inactivate the motor function of Sure, the sure, 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 yes. Yeah. So maybe there are other things that the myo2 does. No, there's another pathway. Maybe. Is the excess still polarized properly? Because maybe 
No, uh, because the rab is, the rab, uh, sec four is not there. Okay, we'll leave it to the later. Thanks. Uh, so we showed that YPT31 and 32 actually couple vesicle formation and motility. A work published by Peter Novik also shows that 31, YPT 31 or 32 bring also SEC2, which is the J for the next uh, rub that is going to be in this system. So actually it sets up the vesicle to a few sub-steps. And I think that maybe this now can answer a question that if you can, if you can, you can start, the cargo is there, cargo coats are there, the coats are there, but the vesicle just will not, will not, maybe it's not even going to form this, yeah, it will stop probably from recruiting every, anything, the cargo receptor included. Why? Of course it may happen. Why the yeah. cell, okay, so that's a different why question, why that's philosophical. You have to stop some type of some mm -hmm. transportation, there are proteins, okay. so okay. might be transported. Okay, this what is, is the, because in Paris, you know, there are intersection, two-dimensional Oh God, can you imagine yeah. how Paris will look like? If all these cars exactly will be there without the traffic lights? It's two-dimensional geometry, okay? It's solved by something because on two dimensions it's poorly organized because the streets this cross. This is three dimensional. Street cross. Here they don't cross. Why you have to stop it? That's the question. And I don't know. it's absolutely wrong. Absolutely nothing to do, to do with the cells. Two dimensional geometry here, 3D, nothing in common. Why? What's the logic? Why do we make a red okay. light? Okay. What, Can function, we? What is the function of a red light? But maybe the, ans the answer is that actually you stop only when you have a mutant. So you are exactly, but, well, well, but, but why normally you have a regulation, negative regulation? So the, the so regulation is back to the regulation is perhaps not to stop or or, yeah. or, or, or put it on. It's just to make sure that the right physical <coughs> attach the right motor to go to the right destination. What is the right destination? It's only one. In this case, it's the plasma membrane. But only one. It's A to B is only one destination. You don't choose. No, no, but it could go back. It could go back, it could right. go to endosomes, it could go anywhere. Well, it could just stay in place like... Wait, wait, you, if you always go from A to B, why right? do you always go from A to B? Mm. But there's many, many yeah. membranes. There's Golgi, ER... Okay, okay so choose which one... So you want to choose plasma Which membrane. one goes to where? Yeah. yeah. But you so never there's stop it. So there is no red light, only this direction. No, no. 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 So the problem is, let's suppose I'm coming out of the endoplasmic reticulum. Yes. I make a vesicle. So that vesicle, where would I like to take it? I would like to take it, for biological reasons, to the Golgi apparatus, right? But that vesicle could have actually gone directly to the plasma. Okay, so, so, and that's okay, a so they're not red lights, just directions. Yeah. Okay, so there is no red so light. Now this is they're exactly. not really red that's lights. That's one level really of regulation. Yeah. Another level of regulation is the content, which is not being discussed. Here. Yes. Not all the guys, not all the carriers have always the same stuff. You, you also sort out, you segregate, right? And we're not discussing that level of complexity. Yeah, but still, no, but my point was there is no red light. So there's this mutants make something very artificial. It never normally So the problem, itself. so, okay. So the other problem is how do we biologists can study this, right? So historically, the way it has been done is to put perturbations, right? And one type of perturbation is like shut down the pathway. You can shut it down super fast, you can shut it down slow. slow. These are actually relatively slow, they are not super fast, even though it's a temperature sensitive mutant. In general, correct me on this, uh, I don't think it's an instantaneous block, it takes a while, right? It takes less than a minute, I don't know if it's... No, that's it, I just said, yeah. depends on the mutant, but in, yes. in, so this is another level of complication. No, I agree, I understand, but I'm saying analogy with red lights completely wrong. Okay, fine, exactly I agree, right. okay, I take it back, no red lights. No red lights. Because no, it's the rate. The rate is important. Sometimes it goes fast. Sometimes it goes slow. How do you control the rate? Why to make it slow? If you have some amount, you, 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 you no, because it's the timing. It's responsible. So different cargos actually go different so speeds. So, wait. so there is a cargo that you wait, you wait, you wait, and transport it. Yeah, some time. Yes. Why? Yes. Why? Why would, Why would the cell Delation do it? Transport. And that's okay. Can I can I just yeah. try to answer this question? Yeah. This is a question of evolution. And it's a little philosophical, so can we leave it to the end? And please forget about the red lights, okay? <laughs> yeah. Just continue to listen, okay? 
if you want. Orange, you don't have to. No, but there is a, with our philosophy, there is an answer. It's simply, for example, in the cell cycle, yeah. you want to right. have different rates of, 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 of yeah. uh, trafficking mm -hmm. depending on and where you of, are yeah. in the rest so, of So you already have, but we have excess of some production, so you don't have. Mm -hmm. If you no. have excess, excess is no, in some capacity, then you not. keep it. You don't transport it and you wait for what? That can happen too. For example, yeah. if you if you don't have need a certain receptor at the plasma membrane, mm -hmm. it might still be synthesized, but it does not go to the plasma membrane until you need it at the plasma membrane. Okay, yes. okay, okay. This is the answer. In that sense, it is a red. Okay, this is what you're waiting for. Yeah. I, I, I'll take it, but it's really not, because regulated secretion at the last step is different kind of regulation, but I'll take it for now, yes. But isn't another function of the REB sort of quality control, thinking of it more like a production line, like if you're making cars, you don't want to send a car out without the steering wheel, it makes sure that yes. everything is correct. So this is exactly what what is shown here, the, it's like it has um, the motor uh, and it has the next um, uh, per, um, protein that will take it to the right place. Okay, so maybe the, the red lights are, are not good, and I'm, I'm sorry that I confused you. Okay, so what about, so I just wanted to show you and give you a flavor of, of this one type of, of regulation. The other one is to look at the whole pathway. And this, we go back to our, to the two uh, GTPases, YPT1, YPT31, and 32. And the question here is, uh, oh, sorry. First, I wanted to say that we showed it by function, okay? I told you we showed it by mutants. More recently, we had to go back and show it by clear localization because there was, a, there was um, uh, in the field, there was confusion, where is, where is this protein and, and which compartment? It's also very difficult to decide which compartment, uh, which are the compartmental markers in the Golgi. So what we did is to, using uh, live cell microscopy with different colors, and we first wanted, we, we had at least two um, uh, markers for the early Golgi. We had two markers for the late Golgi that we, they co-localized with each other. And then we made the YPT1 or YPT31 in green. And we looked at the co-localization. We confirmed everything that we saw by live cell also by immunofluorescence microscopy. So the answer was that uh, now when we did it very thoroughly, that they actually localized to opposite sides of the Golgi. YPT1 is starting early, very, very, very low level at late, in the late compartments. YPT31 is the opposite. So, and they both, about 25% of them, and it, uh, it will just become a little interesting, they actually co-localize with each other, and they co-localize in a compartment that is, uh, regular, is marked by sex seven. And now just treat them, I know that Kathy Jackson likes the sex seven, it's a ARF, uh, Jeff, it's another GPAs, but for now they are only uh, serving, and some people like CAP1 and, 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 and um, CHC1, but for now they are only serving us as markers, okay? So we also did some three color IF and with all the combinations and we could show that, um, again, this is the point that I was trying to make earlier, the YPT31 32 localized about 25% of them, but 95% of this localization happens <coughs> only on the, on the six seven compartment, okay? So now if we make a Golgi map with the YPTs, uh, we have CAP1 early, we have SEC7 and CHC1 late, but we also saw some co-localization of early and late Golgi markers, and we, we called it a transitional compartment. I'm, I'm not calling it cis-medial trans because we didn't show that they really uh, correlate with the enzymatic activities for cis-medial um, um, trans, but that's why we call them early, transitional, and late. Transitional tells you it's fast. It's, it, it, it just comes and goes. So the transitional compartment is also, so YPT1 is on the early and transitional, 31 is in transitional and late, okay? So they co-localize it, the transitional compartment. So now I want to just branch off for a minute to 
um, Golgi cisternal progression or cisternal maturation, we talked about it, this is what people think, how a transport occurs through the Golgi. So the cargo stays in each compartment and what happens is the, ma the compartment matures. And this is within the same compartment, okay? So uh, in 2006, two groups showed in yeast, the, I think that they provided a really good evidence for that you can see cisternal progression. The way that they did it is by looking at a shifting from cup one, which is the early Golgi, to sex seven, which for us it's a transitional late, okay? But until then, until we came along, there was no genetic evidence that this is actually regulated. And I want to go back to what Alberto Luini said yesterday, you do not see regulation until you just do something to it. Yes, I mean, because is there regulation or not, or, does it, or is it, does it just happen, okay? So we wanted to ask this question, do YPTs, do the YPTs which are in the Golgi regulate this external maturation? How do we do it? We have, we, we have mutations that can affect the YPT either to be super active or to be not active, okay? So now we look to see what happens to the dynamics of the cisternal maturation that uh, they showed, the two other groups showed, but now when we look at with these YPT mutations and we look both by co-localization doing life cell and IF in immunofluorescence and looking at dynamics, okay? So, but we also added one more thing. We actually had now a third marker. So we looked at CAP1 to SEC7, which is what they looked at. And we also looked at what happened with SEC7 to CHC1, okay? So we determined the effect of what, when we, I, I'll show you hyperactivation, but we also show inactivation of these YPTs on this, um, both Golgi cisternal, Golgi proteins co-localization, snapshots, but also dynamics. And I'll show you just the dynamics. Um, so when we look at CAP1 to SEC7, so we, we watch it by looking at um, the dynamics of this, uh, and I'm not gonna ask you to look at this, but just to understand what we were doing. And then we have the chymographs of of tracings of this CAP1 to SEC7, and this is in wild type cells. Um, and we have, a num we we have what numbers. What, what does this mean, this line? Moving where? We, we are looking at what happens to CAP1 appearance uh, versus SEC7. So CAP1 always appears about a, a fif 15 to 20 seconds before SEC7, okay? In Golgi. In the Golgi, yeah. in wild type cells. But now when we hyperactivate the YPT1 or YPT31, we wanted to see what happens to them. So what, what we see... What do you mean? Say it again. How you hyper hyper there is a mutation that we can make it super active. It's just always bound to GTP. Okay? O or it looks like it, it has the, um, a, the more, uh, structure that it's always bound to GTP. Okay? So what we see here is that when we overactivate YPT1, but not YPT31, it goes faster. So this step goes faster, okay? Um, with 31, 32, it's similar to the wild type, okay? So this is our regulation of uh, whatever uh, was in the field, CAP1 to SEC7, but then we also looked at what happens to SEC7 to CHC1. We did the same experiment. We look at the, at the dynamics, and then we do the the chymographs and the quantification. And now what happens is that YPT1 does not affect it, but YPT31 makes it go faster from 10, 12 seconds to four seconds. So it's two, it's the effect is two uh, or threefold, okay? Which is significant, okay? So YPT1 activation now uh, uh, makes the SEC7 go to CHC1 uh, faster. So together, we can say, we, we can see it here, YPT1 makes this step go farther, faster, YPT31 makes this step go farther. If we make the, the, uh, the other mutant, the activating mutant, it has uh, the effect that we expect. So in, in uh, conclusion to this part of, the, um, of our experiment, um, we show that 
first of all, this is the first genetic evidence for cisternal progression. Second, we, ac we actually divided it to two different steps. NYPT1 um, regulates the first step, and NYPT31 regulates the second step. One question, sorry. Yes. So <coughs> you're showing some percentages and some fraction of things going faster and slower. But what happened to the other percentage of events? In your previous slide, there was something that said 20% or 50%. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry. I didn't explain it. Sorry. 20% reaching the, the, to the tip, to the top, yeah. and 50%. We are looking at the initial rate. Yeah, and what happened to the other events? Then they are together, sort of, no? What? We are looking, we are looking, we are only, it's not event. We are measuring 20% increase. I sh I sh I'll, I'll put it on the slide next time. Okay let, let, okay, let me rephrase this. Every time you see this, you have exactly the same behavior, or every tracing is a little bit different? No, here is, the, it takes 12 seconds plus minus 2 seconds. That's the average? Yes. Or plus minus a standard deviation. But there are events that are happening either faster or slower, right? Yes. So those, what's happening? I mean, they're not... So, I, I don't know, I mean, we can talk about quantification and if this is enough to say that if it's 12 plus minus 2 or no, 4 plus minus 1. Percentage of, I said, percentage, sorry, it's, it's increase of the red light, the red marker. To, um, In what scale? Percentage of what? 100% is the maximum. Of what? Of, of intensity of the light. Uh, measure to what? Oh. Just intensity oh. and the absolute intensity of the light. So it was the percentage of events, huh? so light, light. Yeah. Light, light being red or green. No, no, which which unit? So is it doubling or what? Twenty percent meaning just It's fifth of fifth of the of the maximum. Twenty. Okay, it's it's bad. I I, I understand. I should have written what the tw what the percentages are. Um, no, the, 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 the answer is, as I, as I understand, 100% of intensity measured whatever in the amount of dye, and, in, when, and then 20%, you, you mark 20% yes. of this intensity, and you say, this 20% level is reached in 12 seconds, yes. then you mark 50% level yes. on this whatever... It's just two measurements of the same common ground. level of this intensity is reached in 10 seconds. This is what, what yes. is the idea. Uh, so just somehow okay, I, thank you. I'll, I'll when you it. get 20% and when yeah. you get 50%. Yeah. This is and the you measure intensity in which number? This I never knows. I don't know. So, so so what, okay, so which number you measure intensity? Intensity means number of molecules. Yeah, uh, yeah. So your, your top signal is that 10 molecules, 50 molecules? I don't know. You don't know. And then but each, each no one... I mean, no, no, I think that intensity is measured in... No, in by, by, by how you feel, how you... I think... All the molecules are... are uh, whatever, each molecule maybe does it, um, emits the fluorescence in a different way, but the same molecule is the same. You have one Golgi and got, let's say, 10 fluorescent molecules, right? The next Golgi had also 10 or had 20? No, they all, so the answer to your question, they all had about the same intensity top here. About. No, there was no, no. So this is fluorescent mar marker. Yes. This is what I, Misha, to your, yes. uh, the answer to your question, this is fluorescent marker and the intensity of the signal is intensity of the measured fluorescent marker. Yeah, there will be no lunch today. Because I'm... Property of the intensity, how often? Yes. Which yeah. one? Number. No, this is what I guess. This is what I understand. So number is also actually... If you do it wrong, you completely mean this number. This is another question. Let us continue. If you change the scale, you'll become a completely different number. If you change the scale, how you measure it, you'll go 20, you have, to, you have 70. Right? It depends on the scale. You make this scale or this scale. Right? The non-linear scale, you'll completely different. The scale is linear. The scale is linear. Okay, why don't we continue to talk afterwards? Okay. Thank you. So the question that we are asking now, this is for Alberto, is so we know that the YPTs are important for 
this is thermal maturation, and we are trying now to look at the um, at the GEFs for YPT1 trap one, GEF for YPT31. 32 to see to go back in the what what <coughs> uh, to see if they also um, first of all to clarify that they really work in these steps and also to see what they do to the Golgi cisternal maturation. Uh, um, <coughs> so the last thing that I wanted to tell you about, and I'll I'll do it, I'll try to do it fast. Not fast by talking fast, by fast by by jumping over slides. So I, I want to talk about autophagy. So if you look at, uh, at my simple model of the cell, um, I, wanted to, I want to add to it two recycling loops. So there is one recycling loop that everybody knows, which is plasma membrane recycling. And we talked about recycling endosomes, et cetera. B and, but there is another one, which is autophagy, that brings stuff from somewhere, from all these compartments to the lysosome. And, and Lysosomes, as we know, they actually spit back all the um, block building blocks, and then they can be uh, built again to go to get back into the ER, for example. So the question is: Is there coordination between trafficking and recycling? And I'm gonna jump over this. Oops. I, I just say why? How can there be one rub? Uh, and this is a, a question in the field, that a field can take a vesicle to two different places. And the answer is, I told you that each rub can uh, recruit different effectors, so each rub can recruit a, sorry, for example, if it will recruit effectors one, two, three, it, it, this vesicle will go to the Golgi. If it will recruit for uh, other effectors, it will go to the lysosome. So, Okay, we'll jump over this. Okay, so I want to talk about YPT1, because we also showed that YPT3 and YPT2 are required for this loop, not just going through the Golgi, but also for this loop. Here is YPT1, which we showed required for going from ER to the Golgi. It turns out that it's also required for autophagy. So the way that we show it, we showed it, is by using a mutant to show a role, and also identifying a recycling-specific effector, an effector that doesn't have nothing to do with its role in secretion, but it is required for autophagy. So first, let me just remind you what is autophagy. It's, a, a, it's a, a, the pathway that usually people study it under stress. And here is an example of how we look at, the, at, at this pathway by GFP ATG8, which is LC3 in mammalian cells. And what happens is that in this pathway, an autophagosome is formed. And an autophagosome is a, this is to remind me to say that it's a double membrane organelle, okay? And it takes cargo, which, so the autophagosome forms around a, a cytoplasmic um, things. They can be either proteins, protein aggregates, or even whole compartments. And then it ta they take them to the lysosome for recycling. There is also um, autophagy under normal conditions, growth conditions. And we have in yeast, for example, this was one available cargo that we were, we were following. And both uh, under stress or in normal uh, autophagy, the process starts by formation of PATH, which is the pre-autophagosomal pathway. And PATH is a combination, a complex of pr th about 30 proteins, which are called ATGs, and membrane. Okay? And um, Osomi got the Nobel Prize just for showing this first step, how this is all starting. But no, none of these ATGs are required for the rest of the pathway. So what is the rest of the pathway? What's beyond the ATG complex? It's a membrane pr a co a process, so it must have all these other machinery components that we all know. So just to tell you what is the YPT1 uh, connection to autophagy, how did we even get to it? We had a mutant. It's a recycling process. It's recycling. Yes. 
the stomach. Stomach of the skull. That's no. eating. Auto eating. Okay. 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 Auto okay. 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 So that's what I was trying to say. It can happen under stress or even under normal condition. So we had the mutant uh, in YPT1. We f we this is actually a very early mutant that ha had no effect, not, not, a ma not major effect on secretion, but definitely it didn't allow cells to grow under stress. And stress in yeast is you just starve them, in this case for starvation, uh, for nitrogen. Then another group came up with a, t a, a subunit of TRAP, also has a role specifically in, in this process. And then we did a is to hybrid screen, and to our surprise, maybe we shouldn't be, have been so surprised, we got ATG11, one of the ATGs that Osumi uh, discovered in his screen for ATG mutants. And we got it by is to hybrid. And um, we, so I'm not going to talk much about it, I'll just tell you that we showed that while TRAP1 is required for the role, so now I'm talking about the activators. The activator TRAP1 takes with the YPT1, takes cargo 2, the Golgi, to the, uh, fr uh, from the ER to the Golgi to the plasma membrane, while two other traps, TRAP3 and TRAP4, which have similar core but different uh, specific subunits, take it to autophagy. Okay, same YPT1. So, and at least one Jeff. So YPT1 is required for cell viability because of its role in secretion. It's required for stress, uh, for autophagy under stress. No YPT1, no stress. These traps, one Jeff is enough. Uh, sorry, one Jeff is enough, so you need to delete both in order to see the, the full effect. Okay? Now what about the effectors? Here again, uh, we have YPT1 going from the ER, a vesicle goes from the ER to the Golgi, we know what is the um, uh, effector, and to, to the... But again, why uh, are the stress para provokes out of action? What is the logic of this? Uh, because, because it's recycling. If you want to conserve a material under stress, you don't have any more nitrogen. You cannot, the cell cannot make any more amino acids. So <laughs> it, it needs to eat its own proteins to, to make these proteins that are really essential for stress, not just extra things that are not essential okay. now. Make sense? Okay. okay. So what we showed, and, and the way that we think about it is, we're thinking about a YPT GTPA's modules. So the module has a GEF, a specific GEF for the specific experiment, for the specific uh, step, a YPT rub, a GTPAs, and, an eff and, and at least one effector, okay? So in this case, we have a, a, a module of TRAP3, specific subunit is TRS85, YPT1, and a, at least one specific GEF, y ATG11. So the way that we showed it is by showing interactions, colocalization, and function. And I'm going to jump over. Um, the colocalization, and maybe I'll just show you uh, fast the function. So th how do we study function in this case? We are lucky because... Um, what kind of stress do you have induced? What kind of stress? We, we starve them for we starve. nitrogen. We starve, okay. In our, our cells. Mammalian cells, you have to starve for si um, amino, acid. amino acids. Amino acids. Thank you. So um, we have specific mutants which are only defective in autophagy, not in growth, okay? TRS-85 doesn't have anything to do with a uh, secretion, so we can delete it and see just the effect of on this GEF on uh, autophagy. Same YPT1-1, the mutant that we later showed, that it disrupts this mutation. It's a one amino acid change that disrupts the interaction of YPT1 with ATG11. It does not affect other functions of YPT1. And we have, of course, ATG11, which is, by definition, was, was uh, isolated as specific for autophagy. Mm -hmm. So we use all these mutants to ask, what is the effect? So again, I don't have time to, I think, talk about results. But I'm, I'm just going to tell you that in YPT1, 
or TRS-85 or ATG-11, there is no pass. So pass can be seen by colocalization of two ATGs or more, if you have more. All the ATGs go to pass, because I told you it's a protein complex, uh, but in YPT1-1, there is no pass. There is no colocalization. They don't come together, okay? So, <coughs> okay. So it's true also, as I said, for the whole uh, module. So the whole module, if we look at, um, at um, function, it's required for assembly of pass, okay? It's the first step of autophagy, and until now, there was no way, there, there was no regu shown regulation on it. Okay, so here we have what I call one, this is math for you, one to two to two. One YPT RAB, two different modules, two processes. So YPT1 with the first module is essential for cell viability, for secretion, with TRAP1, an effector, one effector, USO1, and we have another a module and another process where the same YPT with a different GEF, with a different effector now goes to a different process. So now what we have to, when we think about, I told you in the beginning that there are two upstream inputs to activate a YPT. Uh, one is memory attachment, the other one is uh, exchange, the, the activation by GEF, but I would like to add that there are actually three inputs. If you think about the possibilities, you should have also the, the, this system also has to have a way to recruit the right effector to the right <coughs> module. So the YPT in one module can interact, cannot just interact freely with swimming uh, effectors. It has to work in a module. And it's a big question, how does it happen? Okay. I think that I should stop. Okay. Well, I mean, Um, I'll, I'll just say it in two minutes. I'm not even going to show results. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> no, no favoritism. <laughs> if you wanted to stop, I'll stop. So I just wanted to say, so I wanted to tell you that we discovered a new um, autophagy pathway uh, during normal growth, mm -hmm. and it's actually quality control of ER phagy. Quality control of the ER by, uh, by autophagy of the ER, endoplasmic reticulum. <laughs> so um, it's a, less a selective autophagy ER uh, pathway. And um, the cargo for this pathway are membrane proteins. Now, when we first discovered it, when we overexpressed, made too much of a protein, but when we found it, once we found it, we went back and looked at other ER membranes, uh, e residents. And it turns out that they all, not all of them, some of them, and I'll show you who, uh, um, at least two groups, some go to this pathway and some don't. Um, okay, so we pass through this. This is all the evidence, uh, both. <laughs> uh, um, so we actually showed the stop, the block, by three ways. Uh, one um, was by um, uh, life cell microscopy. Then we also looked by electron microscopy to see what, what is accumulating, and it's ER, and res ER resident proteins are there. And we also showed it that it's really ER by looking at UPR. It's an acid that shows that the ER is under stress. There is an overexpression of a protein one protein and it actually makes the ER stressed so uh, while other mutants that accumulate um, some structures with some of the, of the cargo that we are lo looking at don't do that okay so so this is just two more slides so we called it, so it's a new quality control of the ER um, Without overexpression of proteins, we have like two residents of the of ER. Sec 61 is a, uh, 61 is a translocon agent G1, and these are components of um, getting the vesicle to the Golgi. They do not go to this pathway to ER phagy, but these do. But and and about 20 to 50 percent of these proteins, depending on the protein, go there all the time. We just don't see it if we don't block it. Okay. 
And then, if we overexpress a single protein, the cells are happy. There is no stress on the cells. There is no induction of general autophagy, but we just have the ER is getting too blocked. Then we get 95% of these proteins and these go now to the ER phagy. Okay? So here are the uh, other ER phage. Um, what happens when you get f when proteins get from the ER? So if they are native, they'll go um, to secretion, uh, secretion to through the Golgi to the plasma membrane. If they are misfolded heavily, they'll go through ERA, ERAD to the proteasome. Uh, there is also a micro ERFAG process, which micro ERFAG means that they do not use the normal the ATGs, so they there are ways to get to the lysosome without it. And now we are we added this new uh, process which takes extra membrane proteins by this autophagy process to the lysosome and we know uh, who participates and who regulates and um, the questions what you are asking now in the lab which are more the um, um, basic questions is what I told you about the input, the three input, how does this work if there is coordination and um, just to connect to human disease, I told you that RAB1 is the mammalian, the human homologue of uh, YPT1, and it's actually involved both in cancer and neurodegenerative disease. This is my connection to Friday, and thanks to everybody who helped me uh, in my lab and beyond, and stop. Sorry that I took over. We don't have to have questions. We can go have lunch, and we can talk the, in the evening, unless you want questions. I just, I'm sorry that I...